Men, do you ever feel like you just can't get ahead? Like you're misunderstood? Like you have no one to talk to that truly hears you? And women, are you often frustrated, hurt, and saddened in your relationships with the men in your life? What if there were a community of like-minded men going through the same challenges that would support, hear, and understand what you're going through? Working together in unison to create understanding, intimacy, and strong connections. That's the Way of the Illuminated Warrior. Way of the Illuminated Warrior talk show is a forum of candid conversations for men and women about men. Being a man today is not always easy. Until now. Masks. We all have them and we often hide behind them for multiple reasons. So on today's show, we're going to dive into some of those reasons why we wear masks and how to step out from behind them. And it often seems like a way to protect ourselves when we're wearing those masks from being hurt and expressing our true natures. So, Beth, how are you, my friend? And where's I your am, mask? Where's your, doing... where's your mask? What, what <laughs> masks are you wearing that we can't actually physically see right now? Well, I'll start by saying you look amazing in, wow. all, of your, uh, in all of your silliness. You're an amazing spirit to have well, host a you. show. And you've, I'm glad you take it that seriously. There's nothing wrong with that. Plus, it's fun. Plus, it's fun. Um, I I think about this often, to be honest with you, Oscar, because I wear glasses clearly to be able to see. And I might I might have a dozen pair of glasses for the express reason that what do I feel like wearing today? Which pair do I feel like wearing today? What's the look I want to look like today? What am I wearing even to the point of which set, which pair of glasses is going to best suit my outfit, et cetera, et cetera. So some people might say I have a bit of a. Um, like a, a hoarding <laughs> problem with glasses. I don't look at it like that. I look at, at it as an expression. If this is the way my eyes are working and operating for the time being, then this is a bit of a mask that I, that I wear. And I'm going to take quote unquote full advantage of it to, to, to change it up a little bit, change mm. it up a little bit. And I guess that's what we do with masks. We change them up. Like I'm, you could take your, cute little black mask off right now and put a funky All right, fine. multicolored no you don't have to i'm not telling I... you yet but then another mask will show up right <laughs> well the thing is the masks don't always show up so these are you know talking about like personality masks um you know for example the overachieving masks so it may help one feel like they're hiding in plain sight you know okay um, yeah but also that mask and most, if not all the masks, it's exhausting. It's exhausting to wear these masks, which are not always outwardly seen. Um, and we do it for whatever personal reasons, you know, um, again, that, you know, that mask of um, overachieving, for example, um, it, it, it comes out in the things that we say, the things that we do, the things that we mm -hmm. feel. Um, but it's also a way to hide ourselves, you know, from other people, you know? So I know right. for me, I'll talk about like my mask and I'm going to ask you to talk about, I noticed I said mask singular. I have many masks, which most of us do. Um, <laughs> they're usually protectors, you know, uh, often for like our self-esteem and being hurt. Um, but again, wearing these masks, it could lead to, to stress, anxiety, depression, exhaustion, any number of things, you know, but I think, because of the way society is, the way that we're raised, um, we we adopt these masks as a self defense mechanism, you know, to help uh -huh. protect ourselves from being hurt from from others, from society, from abusers, from bullies. So I'm going to put you on the spot, and the first thing that comes up, like, what kind of masks would you say that you that you've worn or that you wear? Um, a very common one for me, Waska, thanks for asking. Thanks for putting me on the spot within like five minutes of a starting interview. But well, that's okay. I'm, I'm a little tired that's this okay. morning, so usually I get there in two <laughs> minutes, but you know, I gave you a three minute reprieve today. Um, for me, one that's quite common, being in the healing arts business, like both of us are, is imposter, the imposter syndrome or the imposter mask, mm. where I'm as human as the next person, obviously. And yet, because I'm in this line of work of people like you and I, I'll continue talking about me since the question was about me. And I'm in this line of work of the healing arts, being an intuitive therapist. Aren't I supposed to have all the answers? I have to have all the answers, right? I have to have it perfectly aligned. And especially since I'm attuned to speaking to guidance from non-physical, that's an even bigger whammy because aren't they supposed to get it right? So 
if I'm feeling with this, I'll use it as a session with a client, maybe a typical client for me is happening and I'm giving them the guidance and I'm getting guidance and I'm feeling and I'm working with them and we're getting all into the mojo. And then I sense that they're, they're not, they're not getting as much as I think they should get. You know, I'm going to be worried that they're going to put their ignition in the car and say, that was a bunch of woohoo. That was a bunch of bullshit. I'm going on with my life and that wasn't helpful at all. So see, even me telling a story, I can feel my mask coming up. So well, I'm you're avoiding the a... question. You're talking about your work and others. Like what's your mask, Beth? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's the, what are you avoiding? So, so I avoid looking like I don't know what I'm talking about mm. when it comes to my work. And I likely do it in other areas of my life too, but this is kind of like a good relative to what we're talking about here is I put, I put on the mask that says, just for the record, everybody, I know exactly what I'm talking about. Mm. So would you That's say that relates mask. to like self-esteem and worthiness? 100%. That's a very big as, one. As, a, as, as opposed to, and it, so I'm aware of it. I'm consciously aware of it. And even when it happens, I'm still aware of it. As opposed to me, though, having grace for myself, a sense of awareness as a human being to say, how could you possibly get it all right all the time? How could you possibly? It's impossible. And so by the, grace, by the grace of the universe, you say, yeah, maybe I was a little off on this one today. Or you know what? I have no idea what I'm going to do with this client today. Let's just go with the flow. They don't have to think I've got it all together because they're, they've made the time and they're paying me for my time. No, no. So as I, as I counteract that mask, I call it grace. I give, I, I'm learning and still practicing, to be honest with you, Waska, to give myself the grace of God or the grace of the universe to say, we're, we're just going to allow it to flow through. You don't have to put up that mask that says you got it all together. How's yeah. that? That's that's beautiful. <laughs> I, well, I love that because part of this conversation is like, how do we take those masks off and be okay with that? So grace is one great example and way to do that. You know, have have that grace for yourself and for um, and, and the confidence and grace for others that they're going to accept. And if they don't accept, that's okay. Anyway, yeah, but to have that yeah. for yourself, that's uh, the masks are um, it makes me think of um, a Native American uh, cosmology. You know, uh, we've talked about this before. We pull like animal ally cards for the season or just for fun, whatever. Um, yeah, dragonfly in Native American cosmology represents uh, masks and the illusion because masks are an illusion. It's it's we're masking who we I like really, that. really are. We're covering up, you know, around other people, whether it's in social work, personal interactions, whatever it is, you know, and we, and we mask our personality, um, you know, with our words, even with our thoughts, with our facial expressions, you know, mm -hmm. for me, um, I, I think I got this from my dad. Um, maybe, maybe not. He was, he was very expressive in his, in his demeanor, physically, facial expressions, uh, body language and his actions. And I use humor a lot um, to, hopefully to heal. And I think that I've transitioned and grown into that. Um, early on, I used it as a diversion and as a protection mechanism for myself. Mm -hmm. Like if somebody would give me a compliment, like, no, 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 I'm not worthy. That can't be true. I would make a joke out of it. I can never, I can never just say, wow, hey, thanks for saying that. I'd always have to make a joke out of it. Or if, if a feeling was just really, um, I can't even think of the word, um, challenging for me or just was uncomfortable like if, if, if i had an uncomfortable feeling i would just use humor to just divert you know so that was a mask that i wore and i still use humor but again that's part of my my spiritual name uh waska waboos um with the um the lightness of spirit as the sacred clown is um is part of the meaning and the sacred clown in native american american tradition is um is what's called a hayoko or a contrary or somebody that uses um, humor, laughter, sometimes sarcasm for healing purposes. So I like to think oh. and believe and and be conscious of that. When I am using humor, it's it's for healing, either for myself or for other, and um, and that's the intention behind that. So oh, I love that. I, yeah. a, I I wasn't aware of that for you that that Waska had the other the other name with it. What what boost you said? Um, yeah, it's interesting because a lot of people, you know, have, have a hard time just even calling me Wasco or they call me Wasaka <laughs> or whatever, but that's, it's perfect. And it's great because that's what the name 
reflects it's the it's the oh. humor he remembers the healing medicine of humor and laughter as a sacred clown is part of the that meme. is so, amazing um waboose is the way they say buffalo this is in the shishindi or the apache tradition so the, the waboose okay. is the way they say buffalo of the north and and um waska is of the south so the, it's the complementary opposites and the yin and the yang and the balance and um there's a lot more that goes along with it so i try to honor that that name and that vibration. I tell people all the time um, because they on, like on, on social media, it's like Perry Waska Finkelstein, you know, it's like, well, do you go by Perry or do you go by Waska? And um, I go by either, but I prefer Waska because Waska is a higher vibrational self for myself. Yeah. And I, and I, I'm not going to say I don't wear masks as Waska because I still do. I think most of us, if not all of us do, but I, I try to really be mindful and conscious that Waska is my higher vibrational self. And, um, I, I say not that not that Perry is like the asshole from New York, but he can be. And and so can Waska. Um, but I, I really, you know, do my best is to stay on that higher vibrational, um, you know, feeling and vibration um, as Waska. So that's that's why I go with Waska as a verse. That's amazing. I'm you know what? I'm so grateful. I got a really warm feeling in my solar plexus, actually, while you were telling that story of how how beautifully you've learned to be connected to. A Percy and a Waska and and integrate the masks or non masked whatever. It is a mask. Um, Waska, yeah. even Waska is a mask, but it's a ma I think it's a healthier mask. I feel like it's yeah, a healthier yeah, yeah. mask for me, but it's still right. too a mask. Um, interesting that your father being being the kind of personality and type that he was made you or forced you through his through that relationship that you had with him to many many years going you know fast forward to today that that's actually the vibration of your of waska like that that's not lost on me waska that is it's not lost on me that's yeah. yes yeah yes. I, feel, I feel like i get to honor him by being this way because i often say like you know i just think like oh thanks dad you know because he was very funny um he wasn't a, actually a lot of times he wasn't serious um okay I, I I think it's partially because of his upbringing. I've, I've shared this story before. Um, it took me, I think, until in my 40s till I really kind of forgave him and then forgave myself for having feelings, um, being so angry at him that he couldn't express to me what I really felt I needed and all. Um, and what I realized was he basically still, he was a man boy. He, he fell asleep uh -huh. in bed with his dad at, at 12 and a half years old, almost 13. He woke up, his dad had died. He never got over that. You know, oh, I, I don't know course. how you do get over that. So he was a he was a 13 year old man that just really never progressed in his demeanor and his words and and, and everything, really. And mm -hmm. um, he started drinking at a very, very young age. Um, he was raised by his older brothers and sister. Um, no higher education, grew up on the streets of Lower East Side of Manhattan. And they fought. They fought for, you know, survival to just have whatever they could have. So they did what they needed to do. They gambled, they cheated, they stealed, you know. Um, I had a very wow. hard time with that growing up and seeing that, you know. Um, and I, I like to, again, you know, thanks, Dad. I mean, I'm not any of those things because of who he was, you know. So I, yeah, I yeah. honor him for that, you know. I don't, when I was younger, it used to, like, really, like, hurt me and piss me off. and like, what, what are you doing, you know. But you know what? That was his path. And cliche, he did the best he could with what he had. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And, Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and and how dare we have we have no right. Any one of us have any right to look at anyone in judgment and and, and say, what the hell, dude? We're like, what the hell? No, we, yeah. we, we we're entitled to say what the hell and then listen to their story with an open heart. Right. Without a mask exactly. on, but yeah. with a full on open heart and say, wow, I get it. I get it differently. You don't have to entirely get it. Maybe you'll never entirely get your dad, but you get it from a different perspective or you get it from an open heart. And that's. Yeah. That's well, from, where the that's where the real magic happens. That's absolutely. where the real enlightenment starts to happen. Wow. Well, from the open heart was me realizing this is his mask. This is his mask. So he doesn't have to really feel that hurt that he felt what that his his dad left him at a very young age. And this is the way he grew up and, you know, drinking every day. That was the mask that got him through, you know, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. you know, yep. so masks are a way for us to, you know, kind of sidestep. I'll say reality to a degree, to, to a degree, or really showing up authentically as ourselves because it can be scary, you know. Um, yeah. So would you say? Would you say there are? Sorry, finish your statement. No, no, sorry, no it's okay. Talking. Go ahead. Um, would you say there is such a thing as a like a good mask? 
Um, if we're gonna, if we're gonna like classify our label as good and bad, I think I, I could say it's a good mask if it's if it's healthy, if it's helping you know the person grow, if it's helping to heal yourself or others, if it's contributing um, to a way of being in service. Then, because I, I don't, I don't think there's very many people on this earth that don't wear some kind of mask. It's it, yeah. again, environmental, parental, peers, um, the way we grow up, we're we're almost like indoctrinated into you know wearing the martyr mask wearing the victim mask, wearing the bully mask. I mean, there's just there's so many masks that are available to us, you know, um, and, and how often, like anybody who's listening, how often have you felt self-doubt or that you've been abused or that you were being bullied or maybe you were the bully? I mean, if you think back mm -hmm. in your life, most of us can relate to those things, you know. Um, again, with me, it's the humor mask, you know. So it's a protector, Um you know, and again, a way around that, so to speak, in a healthy way, using it for um, for for good, as we're saying, or to be in yeah. service or to help and to heal, you know. So, um, you know, that's my take on it. Yeah, I would say that you've got, based on what you're expressing and basing on, basing on what I can feel between the two of us energetically, that you've got a nice, good, balanced mojo around that now and you know probably not 20 years ago maybe but probably not 20 years ago but today you're you're understanding the gift that is yours through your, your experience with your father and now using it for service that's pretty cool that's very very cool you should yeah well, pat yourself on the back for that one that's commend well you know, as you mentioned, we're both in um, really like the healing arts and uh, which requires self-awareness and awareness of situations and others and, and doing counseling work. You really have to kind of take that um, neutral seat and, and be open, you know, as a as a, they say, like a, a, a empty vessel or a hollow bone to allow whatever the vibration is that somebody's bringing to you and not be judgmental and not be attached if it pushes your buttons and just just be there to be in service to somebody else as, as, as the saying goes to hold space, you know, to allow whatever needs to come out. And in that sense, it's like, we are kind of like taking our masks off some, and, and being standing there naked, you know, which is hard. Yes. It's hard, you know, because again, with the self-esteem with the like, Oh, oh goodness, everybody's looking at me and like, Oh no, I have wrinkles and my hair's turning gray and my nose is uh, you know, whatever yeah, yeah. it is, you know, but I think we all do that. You know, and if uh -huh. we would, we would all just realize that we all do it and we're all in the same, you know, mask, so to speak, and just drop it and just be authentic. I mean, I, I've I've done that um, a lot in the last few decades, um, which is something I, I never did when I was younger because I was so introverted and so afraid of my own shadow. Um, now it's <laughs> like I, I say I don't really care what people think about me. And, and to, a, to a degree, I don't. But of course, I still do. I want people to like me and I want, sure. you know. Um, but I don't really, really care because it's, it's, it's a, it's a weight. It's a chain. It's a, it's a burden to like really care. Like there's, um, there's a Taoist philosophy, um, you know, from Lao Tzu. If, if you yeah. care about what other people think, you're their prisoner, you know, which is true. Very true. Because that's their stuff, not your stuff. And we've all got our own stuff, right? Yeah. Very, very true. Um, I, it, I liken it to another, along the same lines of you and I being in the healing arts and working with other people in service. Um, I forget who the heck said this. I wish it would come to me and maybe it will by the time we're finished our conversation. Someone, someone in the healing arts, I think he was a psychotherapist though, but with a really heavy spiritual slant, um, was being interviewed. And the interviewer said, how do you not take on all the crap from the people that are sitting in front of you especially energetically like it's one thing to be in your head if you're a, a psychiatrist let's say and that's that's your primary focus is head stuff one thing and i respect psychiatrists i'm not saying anything against any of that but when you couple it with the feeling and the and the energetic and the chakras and the, all that kind of stuff that's a different kind of mojo um how do you how do you not take that on you must go home after work exhausted was the interviewer's question I forget who the guy was. Um, but his answer was, I set out from the get-go understanding that it's not my problem. It's not mine. So I can be, to your point, more of an open vessel because that stuff that we're here to talk about for you, Mr. Client, is not mine, which 
it's always stuck with me because I've had many, many people over the years say to me, you must go home exhausted too. And I never had a good answer, mm. but, but I just discovered that answer actually in the, in the last couple of years. And it's a, it's a really, really good one. We do understand people like you and I, I'm here to be of service. How can I help? How can I serve? Well, I can't serve if I take on your problem because I'm not you. I'm not in there. I'm not in there. I'm not walking your walk and talking your talk. That's you. And I guess getting back to the to the topic of masks, that's another part of our work is to, I'm, I'm saying this kind of loosely, but to help people understand when they where there is one, where there is a mask, how it has served them as opposed to it being a bad quote unquote bad thing or an, and how to incorporate those masks into your authenticity yeah. because we're human. They're going nowhere. They're going nowhere. So how do we incorporate them? Yeah. I think, well, when I, th- wow, I'm going to look at <laughs> masks a little differently. I've already learned so much in this conversation. Um, and and I want to go back to, I'm sorry, I feel like I'm jumping around here a little bit. There's just okay. a lot coming through. There's a lot coming through um, is how exhausting it is. It's totally exhausting. Yeah. It's and we switch un- to masks a lot of a lot of times also in midstream. They just goes from from one to the other. So if I can, you, you made a really good point about um, uh, taking taking on the energy of others. Um, mm-hmm. So you probably heard the term like energy vampires. Like so the, if you've experienced this, it's anybody who and it could be any number of ways. But let's say, for instance, they just they just don't stop talking. They talk incessantly. They need your ear. They're not asking you any questions. They're not really present. They just they just need you to be there for them. And they're not giving anything back. You know, Um, that's just one example. There's other people who um, just don't have good intentions, you know, um, and, and, and the list goes on and on. So I've always you know, when I've worked with clients or the or the guys in the in the group, I'm like, you really would benefit best to protect yourself. And as, and as facilitators, energy facilitators, or, or um, I don't want to say healers, but um, you know, when you're doing healing work with somebody, it's really important to protect yourself. So like mm. I learned with Reiki, you know, we put like a glass of water underneath, you know, the, the, the table we're doing work on. And, you know, at the end, you just, you know, transmute that, put it back to the earth. Um, you could smudge and sage. There's, there's different ways you could say prayers uh, just to protect ourselves, like to, only invite in energies or entities that are here for the best and highest good. Yes. Any, anyone else or anything else, you're not invited, stay out, not welcoming you. Um, so there's different ways to do that, you know. Um, and it also gets down to what we talked about in the last show is attachment or detachment, not being attached to anybody else's stuff. It's like you said, it's their, it's their stuff. You know, I don't need to take that on and realizing that like that, this is, this is theirs. I'm here in service to them, but I don't need to make this mine, you know, so Mm -hmm. there's different Mm -hmm. ways to do that and not put their mask on, so to speak. Yeah. And act like as that, uh, no, that's just not a good, going to be a good word. I don't think, but I'm, I was going to say act as a mirror. It's not really a mirror. Take off How your mask of perfection and just right. let it flow, my dear. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm teaching them how to turn the mirror back onto themselves without shame, or as little shame or, or guilt as possible or flogging. Like let's flog ourselves. As soon as we, as soon as we recognize a mask that would be maybe less than stellar of the ones that we might want to present to the world, turn that mirror back on yourself. And, and it's okay. It's okay with compassion. You can be gentle with yourself. Again, I'll use the word grace, have grace for yourself and be willing to in that state of, of wearing a mask and using it to reflect back on yourself as a place. I like the word compassion to, um, to help you heal and do your own work because it's not up to Waska and Elizabeth to always do the work. It's if there's always homework, you know, even for the two of us, there's always homework. Absolutely. Um, and to remain curious and open around any of the masks that you're wearing. That seems to be a common theme every time we talk, right? There's be be curious. Be Yes. Th- this is a whole big wonderful thing you've got going here called yourselves, right? And your connection <laughs> to spirit and your connection to yeah. God or universe, whatever you want to call it, your connection to Mother Earth. Your co- I'm looking out over the lake here, I'm at the cottage and 
one of the most cathartic things about being here is the the lake reminds me of the never ending flow of goodness that's always coming. It never doesn't look good. Even when it's there's a storm, there's something beautiful about the lake and the waves and the yeah. snowstorms that we get up here in Canada. Um to celebrate that great big flow of all things that are coming to us all the time. And it's okay that you put up a mask from time to time. It's okay that you put up a mask from time to time. Do you want to live in this world without? Good luck. Good luck. And I'm not saying that to be Debbie Downer. I'm just saying we need them and can incorporate them with an open heart and a curiosity around why we're doing it. Why we're doing it. Great yeah. point. Well, it makes me think of like metaphor of the lake because the lake is is a reflection. You know, you look in the lake, what do you see? Is it is it narcissus? Is it, you know, acceptance? Like, what is it? You know, so the, the, the reflection of the lake is such a great metaphor. And if you think about like if you're looking into a lake and it's and it's raining, you can't see your reflection. You don't get that that feedback. And it's kind of akin to like when you're angry or anxious or putting out um, vibrations that are, are not clear, you know, it's the same thing. You can't think clearly. You can't feel um, compassionately or clearly or coming from a place of the heart when that, when there's that, um, as my, as my mom would say, that tumult, you know, that, 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 you know, non harmonious vibration, you know, right. so I, 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 cause I'm a very visual person. You know, I, I thought about that as a metaphor with the lake, you know, you could have the clear lake and just looking into the mirror and, you know, what do you see? Or, you know, this yeah 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 Yeah. right oh so could you i wanted to ask you if you could relate to this because this is this was a big one for me back in the day and i remember how challenging and exhausting it was being a perfectionist like from Uh, from everything like i would just you know beat myself up from the words i used to if i was um if i was painting if, if if the cutting, doing the cut in the line, hit the ceiling. I'm like, oh, you know, I would get out the, t- t- you know, it was crazy. It was really, really exhausting. And that relates to, you know, self-esteem. You know, I wanted to be accepted. I wanted to be seen as as perfect, which good luck with that. It never, yeah. it never translates into a healing, you know, feeling. Um, it's just anxiety. And then the self-bashing comes in, you know. So I don't know if you could relate to that, you know, just that feeling of perfection and talking down to yourself and and even doing it as a joke, you know putting yourself talking down to yourself is it yo, yeah 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 and and that that goes back to something that you said earlier in this conversation too is that when someone gives you a compliment how difficult it is for us to say thank you yeah like it it, it almost doesn't translate like you just it's so difficult to do mm-hmm. because we're accustomed to if someone says oh really nice sweater that you've got going there Beth oh this old thing as opposed to saying thank you I like the sweater right you, yeah it's really that really is- interesting but yeah. I would say that almost all of that, I'm going out on a limb here a little bit because I'm not a researcher, but um, almost all of that comes back to our neediness as children for being accepted mm-hmm. for exactly who, who we are. And let's face it, Waska, we were raised by a generation of parents that did not, for the most part, get that one right. Yeah. Um, again, we accept them. We understand it. We do our work. We become curious around it. We understand, understand, understand. We, of course. But that doesn't change the fact that there was trauma. It doesn't change Absolutely. the fact that it that it cut you know cut right to the heart of our hearts of unworthiness, and so we we, we have to do our work around that. And these masks help create. I'm thinking of more when we're little. Help create a place of safety for us. Yeah, a place of safe of safety. So go going back to your share about uh, perfectionism. Um, I was I have an example of this just the other day. So you're bringing up cool stuff for me to explore i'm as of late especially during the pandemic i took up watercolor painting and for fun i'm a prolific knitter and crocheter and that's kind of like one of my hobbies but i thought i'm gonna try something different you know because i'm stuck in the house for two and a half years i think i'll try to take up something different so watercoloring it is and i bought all the gear and all the paint brushes and all the stuff and i sign up online for a couple of little courses hour at a time to learn how to watercolor i was so hard on myself i almost threw it all in the trash and my husband god bless his heart encouraged me he said why do you think you're going to pick up a paintbrush and make the most beautiful piece of art ever he said the stuff that you're playing with and when he used the word playing i got mad at him because Mm. 
playing isn't part, you know, I'm supposed to be perfect and perfect is not playing is not part of the equation. Um, and so even just honest to God, honest to God, yesterday I was practicing painting and the instructor YouTube video I was watching said something and I went, Oh my God, it was like an aha, but it was so simple. She said, you may have to do this exercise a thousand times. Hmm. And I went, a thousand times. I've done it once, sister, chicky poo. I've done it once <laughs> and mine doesn't look very good. So even, even yesterday I was in that perfectionism mode and I, I had to sit back and I put my hand over my heart and I did, I took a couple deep breaths and I looked at my hand with the paintbrush and I went, okay, we got this. Maybe we will have to do it a thousand times. And it brought tears to my eyes. And I put that perfectionism yeah. thing aside for a minute. Who cared except for me or exactly. the little child, the little child in me that was totally interested in making sure first time, like, what kind of person would do that to a little child? Like the first time you did a watercolor line across a page it had to be perfect. Like that's nuts. Yeah, That's nuts. And that just happened to me yesterday. So there you go. Well, so I'm, as hum I'm as human as the next person because that absolutely. just happened to me. So mm -hmm. uh, looking at like one of my favorites, I'm, I'm a huge, uh, huge Van Gogh fan. So oh, Van cool. Gogh never, never knew his quote unquote greatness until after he was dead. Hopefully he knows it. Um, <laughs> But he suffered. He suffered like mentally, physically, emotionally. Um, he just wanted to be recognized by his peers, by Gauguin, by um, all the all the other like masters or guys that were a little bit ahead of him at the time. So you know, he he lived in Arles, France, for a long time, and um, lived in squalor. You know, and just wanted to be accepted. You know, perfectionism, self worth, all those things were there. All those masks, um, and you know. He, again, he didn't know. He didn't get to get to experience that while he was alive. Uh, point being is, so now we recognize him as one of the greats, you know. Right. Um, easy, much easier said than done. If he would have just said, hey, I'm doing this for me. I am good and I, I love what I do and that's good enough. Again, easier said than done. You know, whole different mindset about wearing masks. So yeah. I'd love to just shift into like ways that we could uh, benefit from either removing the masks or... Um, you know, just living with what what they're offering in the best way. Because so again, just just to recap, you know, we got the martyr mask, we got the victim mask, we got the the bullying mask, um, the the humor the humor mask. Um, there's calming masks. There's so many types of masks: the overachieving mask, mask, um, self bashing mask. You it goes on and on and on. Um, so. Um, what what would you like to offer? Um, which we've we've shared a few things already. Um, the benefits of removing those masks and really being vulnerable and allowing people to see who we are, feel who we okay. are, sense cool. who we are. Good, good, good setup for an answer. I have two things to say around that. One is that I think in moments of reflection, and we always go back to this too, this is a practice. You don't get to, none of us get a spiritual bypass that allows us to just get from point A to point B, no reflection required. No, that's not the way it works. So you, so you, decide you're going to spend some time in curiosity around some of these masks. I love the list that you just gave five, six, seven kind of masks that you just gave overachiever, martyr, all that. Like, I think that's a really, really important first step. Waska is to, is to name it, but I love using archetypes like you just used. Hmm. So instead of saying to yourself, I think I'm putting up a mask there. This does not feel comfortable for me. Well, let's identify it. And archetypes, archetypes are very important in our line of work because as soon as you say overachieving, that's an archetype and everybody gets it. Yeah. As, you know, as soon as you said perfectionist, everybody gets it. If I said to you, I have a Pinocchio mask, I lie. I'm a liar. Everybody gets that. If you say, um, I've got a Wicked Witch of the West, that's one of mine, Wicked Witch of the West mask, you kind of get it, right? So I would say identifying for sure and then placing that mask after you wait after you identify it do a few dot shots of how that shows up it's easy for me to do the pinocchio one because i'm really good at lying mm -hmm. um and i recognize how it, well it, it i've got it in an appropriate place now but it didn't always be that way um if i if i have to keep a secret and lie about a friend's surprise birthday party that's a that is in fact a lie but it's in balance to 
something of, of a higher good. So that's, I use that as an example all the time. But when I was younger, 20 years ago, I lied my little ass off to get out of all kinds of stuff and it wasn't appropriate. So I would identify that my Pinocchio mask and I would make lists of there's an example of it. There's an example. Remember when you did this, Elizabeth, remember when you did this, that doesn't make you bad. That doesn't put you into that vibration. That's just called a reflection. So yeah. you name it, you reflect on it, and then you find a place to put it because we I don't believe we can remove them entirely. Yeah. I think they're part of our culture. I think yeah. they're part of our psyche. Maybe Freud and Carl Jung would have something to say about that. I think sometimes we're a little remiss when we say we're just going to get rid of something. Uh, yeah. I don't think this is an example of something we can get rid of. I think like you with your humor, you find um, an appropriate place for it to sit in your life. So I would call that like a, a three-step process. And I, I'm i warning everybody in a good way, though, is once you start to identify, when I identified my Pinocchio mask a, num- mask a number of years ago, when it shows up, it's like, meow, like it's, I totally get it. Yeah. I don't even have to reflect on it anymore. Like I totally know there's Pinocchio again. The mm-hmm. mask is out. It's kind of cool. It's kind of cool, yeah. and it's a really freeing thing to understand about yourself so that when yeah. it comes up i go holy smokes there's that pinocchio mask again Beth, what are we going to do about it yeah well that's, that's a great um, yeah that's a great insight yeah we'll be right back after this do you sometimes feel down lost or lonely are your finances feeling sluggish can your relationships use a healthy tune-up don't fear bro help is here Experience the benefits of connecting with other men who are going through similar challenges. Be supported in our safe, sacred, and inspiring monthly telecircle with the Brotherhood of the Illuminated Warriors. Connect with Waska for one-on-one mentoring with the first session completely free. What have you got to lose? Check out IlluminatedWarrior.com or send an email to Waska at IlluminatedWarrior.com. You're invited to step up your game and join us. You'll be glad you did. Yeah, really wonderful insight there. So so we could say, um, you know, personality masks occur as a response to social pressures, um, you know, so many things, bullying, abuse, fear. Um, and what you were just saying is great. Just really having that awareness and labeling it and putting it where it needs to, to be is um, is really helpful. Um, mm-hmm. So these are just ways that we, your masks help protect, protect ourselves. Um, but it's okay, you know, to take the mask off and see how you feel, you know, be, be vulnerable there. And yeah, you know, it, it, it does the self-esteem things come up, uh, emotional harm issues may come up. Um, but we, if we don't have the faith in, in ourselves and in others, because when we reveal the mask, it, 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 it gives permission for somebody else to do that as well. Yes. So, yes. That's where yeah. we can be mentors, teachers, yeah. lead by example, so to speak. Can I ask you a quick question though? Yeah, that absolutely. Could you do, um, when, when that, I love the words that you just said a few seconds ago, the emotional harm comes up because it will, it will. What do you do about that? If well, you if you realize this wave of emotional harm is coming up and you want to quickly put a mask on, but you decide yeah. you're not going to do that, how do you deal? Well, that's that's a that's a great question. Thanks. So first is is like you were saying, it's it's the, it's the self awareness, you know, because I might not realize it, I might be triggered, I might get defensive. So going with okay, I'm of my higher vibrational self now. I realize it. I'm getting triggered. It's it's bringing me back to a place of when I felt bullied in, in, in junior high school, whatever it is. And I can relate to that. I'm like, okay, I stop, I breathe and I don't use humor to, to deflect or, you know, divert or change the direction of what's going on. And I sit and I accept it and I feel what's coming up for me because if you don't feel it fully, it's very hard to transmute it or let it, let it, you know, I always say emotions buried alive never die. So it's okay to feel these things, you know, and not bury them and not mask them, so to speak, you know. Um, so change isn't always easy. You know, another yeah. thing thing of saying I love change, change is inevitable and growth is optional. So I'm always on a growth path. Um, it's not always easy, but um, like one of my mentors, Ocean of Fast Wolf, used to say, she's like, see how it feels. Don't take my word for it. So drop the mask, be vulnerable, let those feelings come up. And don't judge yourself and don't 
really be attached to or care what anybody else's quote unquote judgment is of you and just go with right. it. And, um, and I think that's a really great way, um, to, to elevate and grow. I really do. Yeah. So that's brilliant. That's beautiful. Thanks for sharing that. That uncomfortableness is a necessary part of the healing process, right? Absolutely. Otherwise we're just repressing it. Yeah, absolutely. Very yeah. cool. I love that. Thanks for sharing that. That was yeah. great. So, well, this has been a, another rich, great conversation. Um, I actually, you know, as you know, a lot of times, you know, we'll think about topics and then, you know, I'll meditate in the morning before this. And this is what, what came up. I wanted to find my Batman mask. So I made this out of a, out of a, um, you know, a, oh, uh, wow. A mask, mask, a mask, a COVID mask that I found because I couldn't find my Batman mask. And Batman, for me, he was my hero when I was a kid because he Aww. represented all those things of you know being strong and um, you know being being like a hero and I'm, yeah, even though he's wearing tights, but he but he pulled it off. You know, Adam West pulled that off. Absolutely. You know, he was, he was still he was still the man. You know, um, but for me, that's that's kind of like an ar archetype, the Batman mask of of standing tall of of being in service to the people and, and not putting myself first, um, you know, of course, honoring who I am and, uh, and just being out there and, and, you know, taking off that, that mask and being Adam West and still being in service. So, so Adam West is your, have you seen all the Batman movies? I'm uh, of course. You have. Yeah. 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 Although, that's yeah. a whole nother, whole nother genre, the Batman movies. Um, but, but, but the Batman TV show back in the sixties and seventies, oh, that, yeah. that was my thing. So, so can't be wham, pow, you know, they put a flash up the words when they're fighting and all, but he, yeah. he was for truth and justice and, and what, what was quote unquote, right. You know? Yeah. Um, so, and he was and mentoring, he was mentoring the boy wonder Robin, you know, yeah. so there's a, there's a lot we of were, messages listen, in there. Being a, being a young girl in my teenage years back then, we all loved Robin. We thought he was the hottest old thing and you never really got to see who he was. <laughs> So we always we always thought he was just this hot little boy kind of thing. There you um, go. Interestingly, too, um, I thought about just came to me right now is that when Batman has that mask on the Adam West version, mm -hmm. um, the only thing that you you can barely see his nose, right? But it's covered, yeah. His mouth. Always his mouth. Yeah. So speaking is truth. Speaking is truth. I think that's amazing. That's yeah. really really amazing. <laughs> well, that doesn't surprise me about you that you're a Batman fan. That's really oh yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's very cool. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing your wisdom, my friend. And for those who have not checked out Elizabeth's um, offerings and all, she does regular e-bits, which I really enjoy. So again, as, as always in the show notes and on the screen, you'll see uh, Elizabeth's contact information. Check out her work. And, uh, you know, same with me. If you're interested in uh, connecting, let's do it. Absolutely. So, until next time, let's continue to illuminate our masks with loving kindness. With loving kindness. All the best. Lots of love, everybody. Namaste. Bye, Visit IlluminatedWarrior.com if you'd like to go deeper and find out more about what's available within the Illuminated Warrior men's transformational community. Tune in next time for more candid conversations for men and women about men on the way of the Illuminated Warrior talk show. Until next time, illuminate your path with loving kindness.